this meeting of development control. Um, so we'll go on to the application, David Gertler. I just want to remind members of the public that it's not a rerun of, uh, of the item which was resolved in 2019. And uh, uh, the, the, the planning officer will explain. David, please. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Okay, excellent. John, can you just put the next slide up? Mm. Yellow and blue on it. Thank you. So this is a planning application which would be termed a hybrid planning application. So it's part outline and part full. And it went to the planning committee on the 27th of March 2019. The reason I've put this plan up is because uh, Councillor Franks raised a question about which element of the development was outline uh, when we had a, a, a previous discussion about it and which was full. So the full part of the planning application is the yellow. So the yellow covers the new Century Park access road, so the area that extends in the bottom left hand corner from Airport Way runs around the periphery of the airport and then comes in uh, to the north, um, just south of Eaton Green Lane. Then the blue part, so that, that includes the new Century Park Access Road, the road that opens up the business park. Um, there is a couple of blue dots you will see just in the northern part below the access road. One of those is called a technical services building. Can you point is, it out? Can you point it out? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if my cursor is showing. Is, because um, the, map is, the map is so small that um, yeah. I don't think a magnifying glass would do the job. Um, John, are you able to move your cursor? So that, that blue dot which you were near to. Oh, I've got down, it down, I've down. got down. it. Yep, that one. Oh, oh that one. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the application involves full details for that building which replaces the existing London Luton Airport Operations Limited. Um, service hangar. So this is called a technical service block. Um, and then the rest of the yellow, John, if you move your cursor along the top, past the next blue dot, keep going to the right, sorry, go to the right, and go blue uh, triangle area, all the way around following the yellow. Yep. So that is Wigmore Valley Park and the new Wigmore Valley Park. So that, that was all submitted in detail. Whereas, if John, if you move your cursor up to the blue shaded areas, that is called the New Century Park Business Park. And that comprised um, land which will be industrial, warehousing, offices and a hotel. Um, so the description of development is on the function of, of your business. The outline element is the blue bit. And the full element, where all details were provided, is, is the yellow. The purpose of the report is twofold. One is it's to remind members of the decision that was reached back in the 27th of March 2019. Uh, and the second is to update the committee. Members, I believe there were probably only three or four of you who were on the committee in 2019. I, I, the committee started at two o'clock in the afternoon and this application ran on till six o'clock at night. There were 20 formal presentations from members of the public, um, a right to reply from the applicant and there was my presentation which I think possibly took an hour. Um, I do still have that presentation if members wanted to hear the detail but the detail was discussed uh, it was presented to members and then it was discussed by members and the resolution was made. The site has actually been allocated uh, in numerous local plans and the last local plan obviously is the 2017 one where the examination in public uh, did consider and did consider that there is a need in Luton for business land. So whether that is offices, industry, warehousing. So it emerged out of the 27 local plan, but it had been there since the 80s. So the planning history is actually provided in the report. Um, 
on the basis of um, the presentation that, that went to members, it was resolved to grant consent subject to four specific matters being addressed. So the reason for bringing this report to committee is to update members on what happened since then and uh, address those, those four specific issues. Uh, John, if you can just click onto the next slide, because this will just show members. I'm again sorry if it's such a small slide, but what this shows you is the uh, overall development. So if you recall the area of the business park where you can see some light blue buildings and some dark blue buildings, that is all outline. Every single matter there is reserved for future determination. The only one building where detail is provided, John, if you move your cursor to the left, uh, that building, so that is the technical services block. And then the rest of the development is, is the full application. So the new Central Park, um, the, 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 the parkland, Wigmore Valley Park extended, and the new Central Park access road, all that full details were provided. So again, on the third page of, of my report, point, point five, it tells you that the site, um, the site relevant site history was set out in the report. Um, I could just add to that by saying that the site has been allocated um, since, since the 80s and 90s, really. Um, then, in terms of the uh, numerous reports which were attached, I, I'm hoping members did have the opportunity to read the reports that were attached. So the appendices to, to this short report included the uh, full report that went to committee with the appendices which had the draft conditions as well as the objections that had been received. The committee resolved that the application should be granted subject to four things. One was referral to the Secretary of State. So the committee was 27th of March 2019. Referral to the Secretary of State took place, uh, the, the second uh, or the third element of the report was there was a consultation still going on. We had advertised the, bill, the, the, the proposed development on a number of occasions, but one of the things, so it was EIA development, it, it was accompanied by an environmental statement. Uh, it was development that we said conflicted with the local plan in part, so it was um, advertised as a departure. And then the third bit that we'd not consulted, not advertised it on, was that it, it was a major development. So although no one was prejudiced by that, we decided administratively before the committee that it should be advertised as that. So the consultation for that was, was still going on at the time it went to committee. And that finished on the, the 10th of April, so about 13 days after committee. So one of the requirements was that subject to any additional representations being received and being taken into account, then the application should be referred to the Secretary of State. That consultation did finish. Um, the application was referred to the Secretary of State on the 15th of April. The State didn't make his decision until about the 22nd, I think it was, of July, when he decided that the application did not need to be called in, that it was a local matter and the local planning authority was entitled to make a decision. So the resolution to grant was not challenged by the Secretary of State. He did not feel the need to take over this application. And then the second requirement of the committee was that it be subject to a Section 106 agreement and there was quite detailed um, obligations set out in the heads of terms. And then the, the final element was that the application should be approved subject to the conditions which were presented to the committee. And you'll see in the addendum report, which is one of the appendices, there, there were a few changes made to, to those, those conditions. So just to confirm, the Secretary of State did look at this. And the Secretary of State on the 22nd of July 2019 decided that it planning authority. The Section 106 has actually now been finalised. Um, it's taken a very long time to deal with, partly because of the interest in the land, trying to ensure title, and then a, a number of parties are bound into this. So the airport operator obviously has significant interest in chunks where, where the development is proposed. Uh, Lau, the private company submitting the application, has to be bound into it, and the bank 
so they've all signed it and it is now with the council um, for, for engrossment. Paragraph 13 pointed out the policy implications and I, I could go through that, but that, that took quite a, a while at committee. Um, since, since the application was reported to committee in March 2019, um, we feel that there are two, so the past, we feel that there are two considerations that this committee uh, should have brought to their attention. The first of these is that the national planning policy framework under which the application was considered um, was the 2017 version. The 2019 national planning policy framework does not materially change that version. All it does is add or remove. It removes due to legal action. It removes one paragraph uh, which was about minerals, which has no relevance to this application. The second consideration that we feel the committee should be aware of and bringing it back to the committee now that the legal agreement is ready for signing uh, completion is that climate change has obviously moved up the agenda and the council declared a climate emergency on on the 13th of january 2020 which was after the planning application had been considered by the development control so we considered it relevant and important to, to bring this back to, to members just to, to update them. Um, there has been further correspondence uh, since this application was first, uh, first uh, since the resolution was first made to, to grant planning permission. One of, one of the um, people who gave an oral presentation at the planning committee um, strongly argued in their oral presentation and, and post uh, the recommendation to grant strongly argued that this was a nationally significant infrastructure project, arguing that the uh, New Century Park access road is strategic highway for which the Secretary of State or the Strategic Highway Authority, which is either Highways England or um, uh, uh, an agency uh, who, who they can delegate to, were arguing that the, the, the representation was that this was strategic highway. That is not the case. Um, that was looked at on, on the night of the committee, but there must have been about 15 emails which involved myself and um, Stephen Sparshot, the, the council solicitor, basically pointing out to, to this person that this is not a strategic part of the strategic highway network. It is not controlled by Highways England. The local, planet, the local highway authority would be responsible for this road. The strategic road network under Highways England goes back to the motorway, the, M, the M1, and then partly coming off that. Um, it does not include this area. It doesn't even include um, the, the dual carriageway airport way. So, so that was part of the debate. In terms of the legal agreement, this, as I said, is, is now ready for the council to, to, to sign. Um, it has been completed, it has been signed by the three other parties to it. It just needs the council to do it. The second issue on climate change is, again, just to emphasize the thrust of emerging policy. Um, it is with the council declaring a climate emergency and in, in terms of at the national level, you will see that in paragraph 21, I list a number of things uh, where there are additional considerations that, that members should be aware of. But, it hasn't changed in terms of policy or law, which indicates that the overall thrust in the national planning policy framework is to bring forward sustainable development um, and development which is in accordance with the, the development plan. To highlight the, the points in paragraph 21, you have got, uh, in 2019, the amendment to the Climate Change Act. Um, that effectively reduced the target from, um, oh, sorry, it increased. The, 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 the target was to, to get down below the 1990 baseline. It was 80%, it's now to get down to 100%. That, that was by the 2019 amendment to the Climate Change Act. Um, national infrastructure strategy is 
emphasising clean economic growth, targeting net zero by 2050. Just in December um, last year, million application for the council. I'm um, representing another local authority on another airport expansion where climate change is a big issue. I know about the Stansted proposals where climate change is, is an issue. Um, but so it's those are airport developments, but I, I am very actively aware of climate change and I tried to, I deliberately in bringing this report back to committee, have tried to highlight where the direction of movement is from government, including local government with Luton's climate emergency, and to say these are considerations that you as members do have to consider, do, do have to take into account. And I, I feel confident that the development that is being proposed is addressing those things. And with the change that the government's introducing, I think when the development comes forward, it will be more sustainable than when we considered it in 2019. I, I think the restrictions, the improvements that the government's introducing, the way that the council is looking at green jobs as well, should mean that this development is, is actually an improvement on what we considered uh, at the time that we were considering it in 2019. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that. So they've just given a rubber stamp to it, which we knew they would anyway. How they can say that climate change, they're taking notice of it, and yet they're building over the whole of Wigmore Park, which is a county wildlife site. There are plenty of places in Luton where they could have just put these extra buildings and hotels and things, but there's no one who'll speak up. Labour is run by this, Luton is run by this Labour council. They have a far, far, huge majority. So the Lib Dems and Conservatives have no voice in any of the general meetings here because they're just all pushed through. Why they hold consultations, I don't know, because they never listen. OK, so we'll, we'll rush to the vote now then, OK? OK, thank you, Chair. Uh, so you, the recommendation is before you. You, you. You've seen it on the screen. It's a short recommendation. And so that I, I, I propose, I propose the, the, the uh, we recommend to approve. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Ackley? Agree. Thank you. Councillor Ali? Against. Councillor Bridger? Against. Councillor Campbell? For. Councillor Donnellan? For. Councillor Franks? Against. Councillor Abbas? Four. Councillor M. Hussain. Four. Councillor Roche. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. That's carried. Seven, seven three. Okay. That's carried. The recommendation.